My name is Gavin Mary Alice Young Hetherington. When you scroll through YouTube, you may come across an unusual video in your subscription feed that I filmed last week. Normally there's never anything newsworthy about my life, but that all changed last Thursday. Of course, everything seemed quite normal at first. I read my books. I filmed my B-roll. I played with my cats. I even cooked some meals. In truth, I spent the day as I spent every other day, quietly polishing the routine of my life until it gleamed with perfection. That's why it was so astonishing. When FlexiSpot reached out to me about sending me a state-of-the-art standing desk. Now I'm someone who pretty much sits at their desk 24-7 and I was previously using a dining room table that I got from a charity shop and that really wasn't ideal for the amount of work that I do at my desk. But ever since getting my standing desk from FlexiSpot like a month ago now, it has changed the game dramatically. The setting up of the desk was super easy too. It came with crystal clear instructions and it took me no time at all to get the standing desk up and running. And I'm the kind of person who messes things up constantly. You should have a look at my bookshelves. If you get up close and personal to them, you will see that I cut a lot of corners. I fortunately didn't have to do that with a standing desk. I didn't need any outside help whatsoever. And it kind of gave me a bit of a big ego, not gonna lie. As I said, I got my FlexiSpot desk about a month ago and I have been using it nonstop since. I have been looking forward to actually working on it. And I spend so much more of my time there and it's helped me be way more productive because I feel like I'm genuinely in a professional setting. And I'm not just sitting at a random charity shop dining room desk. Having the freedom to change the height of the desk whenever I want to. Even when I'm sitting down it's nice to have it at a really comfortable level and sometimes I really do feel like I have to stretch a bit, move around a bit more, so I will adjust the desk to a height that really suits me and you know what as well it's actually quite fun. It's honestly just so fun changing the height of the desk. Like look at that. It's, it's just so fun! It even has a USB port that I can plug my phone in, you know? I don't even know how I got this far being a self-employed content creator without it. I genuinely don't. The past month of using this desk, I felt like such a professional. I do have a link in the description box so you can browse the many products that FlexiSpot offers, and they really do offer a lot. A huge thank you again to FlexiSpot for sending me one of their gorgeous desks. I could not be happier with it. It is incredible. Yes, this desk has made working at home much easier, but I only wish my work would get to my desk's level. Right, because this is a sort of behind the scenes, week of my life kind of video, I'm gonna show you like the nitty gritty before I even start recording properly. So like this is gonna be the most unglamorous week of my life you will ever see. And I really do want to show you like the genuine side of being a full-time booktuber, YouTuber, whatever it is. And that includes the fact that I really do struggle with dry skin, especially on my forehead and eyebrows. So before I go live, I just have to double check and make sure. And even then, like I'm just looking in the camera, even then I always seem to have missed something and I say it in well, sometimes I don't even say it in editing. I'll say it after I've posted the video. I'll say, oh, I had that big massive bit of dry skin on my forehead during that entire segment and I can't do anything about it now. So like now I'm so paranoid about how I look when I film. So I also keep some like moisturizer next to me so that I can sort all of this out so I can see sort of like on my nose. And half the time as well with my beard. Let's just talk about our flaws, okay? Let's just start this video talking about what makes us self-conscious. <laughs> because let me tell you, doing YouTube is one of the most exposing things that you could do, in my personal opinion, because I stress about how I look and because I am going grey, I just turned 31 yesterday, I get paranoid because the grey in my beard sometimes looks like I have something in my beard and it could be dry skin, it could be food. <laughs> and a lot of the times it's not though. It's A lot of the times it's not. It's just the way that my greys are coming through, it just looks like it. So I get paranoid about that too. So usually I'm spending about five, 10 minutes doing all of that and look at that. I've already kind of almost finished my coffee before I even start to. <sighs> anyway, hi, welcome or welcome back to How to Train Your Gavin. In today's video, as I mentioned, I'm gonna go through my, well, week in the life sort of video. I was supposed to do this back in January while I was filming my Vampire Diaries video and I had every intention to, I had scheduled some like Patreon stuff during that week so that I can showcase off in the video and just to show you, well, a little sliver of what we do over on Patreon. But then I ended up falling ill and my Vampire Diaries video, I had to rush wrap up 
because I was in a bit of a fever dream, not gonna lie. So it's months later, it is now May, and I'm ready, I think I'm ready, <laughs> to show you a week in my life as a full-time YouTuber slash booktuber. And as you can tell, I still had like, a lot of self-doubt because I started YouTube full-time 10 months ago, and I quit my job, and I wasn't sure whether that was the best decision or not. I will answer that during this video, but not right now. <laughs> I've gotta keep you watching. <laughs> so 10 months later, this is how I am, this is how I've scheduled my life for good or bad because I'm not gonna lie balancing what I do now is one of the hardest things I've ever had to do when I tell you I probably haven't found that balance yet and again we're 10 months into doing this full time I, that would be an understatement for example last night I think I was awake until around about 4 a.m trying to sleep but my mind is just really busy and like focused on a lot of content creation I feel like I'm a very creative person and I love coming up with ideas <laughs> more so than executing them let me tell you and honestly I'm just lying in bed and it's just I can't get my brain to shut up and if I'm not thinking about content I'm thinking about an argument I had 10 years ago you know and then I'm trying to wake up around about like nine maybe earlier if possible but that never happens because ever since daylight savings it screwed me over and I tried to wake up at nine but I can only seem to get myself out of bed around about 10 a.m which is not ideal for me because I want to get a nice early start on my day and it just never happens. I'm not gonna over glamorize anything. I'm not gonna pretend that I'm waking up at 8 a.m. with the birds singing in the morning and the sun shining through the sunlight, you know? It's not gonna happen. I'm not that kind of person. I don't even think I have a really glamorous routine of when I wake up. Usually I get up, I have to pick up cat shit and feed the cats. <laughs> and I make at least two coffees before I can properly do anything. Sometimes I have breakfast, sometimes I don't, and then I head into the shower. So I will go through what I usually do in a week. I worked retail for 12 years, and I must say it's actually nice to be able to do something that I'm really super passionate about and something that I absolutely love to do. What are we doing today? Today is a filming day. This intro, right, raw footage, will most likely end up being around about 10 to 15 minutes. I'm gonna try and cut that down to five. And by doing that, I cut out all the times I repeat myself, I cut out my breathing, all of the stuff that you don't need to say, even though I do have this like really hectic filming style and this sort of you know no scripted look into unless it's like a skit or something a no scripted approach to my videos and then saying the final product it usually comes together quite well in my opinion <laughs> like that's the best feel in the world to see the actual end product like I might stress about projects I might stress about the filming of it but to see it come together at the end is like my favorite thing in the world but I think that's just what makes it more exciting you know you just don't know what's gonna happen on each given day as a you you know, self-employed content creator. You just don't know. So what are we doing today? So today, film introduction to A Week in the Life vlog. Cheers to that. I'm going to be starting my Secret Circle vlog. So I am doing a vlog reading all seven books in the Secret Circle series by LJ Smith. And it's a sort of follow-up to my Vampire Diaries video from January. And I will most likely start that today. I didn't want to just do A Week in the Life without actually working on a project at the same time. And I will show you how I film my introduction to The Secret Circle. How I like get into filming a proper video because this is just I mean this is a proper video but you know what I mean I need to schedule a premiere at 5 p.m. BST today so I have made a video it's a one-piece video and I put that up for five days early access for my channel members that is going live today at 5 so I need to remember to schedule that I need to cook food that's very important I've had to start writing that down because the amount of times where I've done a intense filming day or an intense editing day and sometimes I forget to eat even if I'm starving Oh, and, oh my god, look at that. Look at that. I've just had a notification from Domino's at the exact same time. I don't think I fancy Domino's though. And no, I'm cooking food. Just don't even entertain that idea. I also need to film, and you will have already seen this, the Flexi Spot opening introduction where I parody Desperate Housewives. So I need to film that later on today. So I will also show you how I approach like a sort of green screen project and all of that. Even though this one's going to be a lot low key than say like a Mamma Mia video. But I think that'll be really interesting to kind of give you the groundwork of how I approach filming something with my green screen. So I will do that later today. And there will be more things that I'm gonna do during the week that are hopefully more interesting to you as well. But this is just for today. This is like my sort of plan for today. It's gonna be intense filming day. I will start filming the introduction to the Secret Circle video. Oh, I also probably need to start reading the Secret Circle tonight. 
that's fine with me. We can have some reading tonight. I will go through more content planning tomorrow. But for now, we are going to start a new video, a new vlog project, which always takes so much time, especially when it's a complete series reading vlog. So let's just get straight into doing that. I'll show you how I do it. Pray for me. <laughs> Okay, I'm filming this section on my phone because I do need, I need this camera right here to, to fill my introduction. And I want to show you like kind of what I use. Like I do use this. I will tell you what the items or the products are in the description box. And also I'm just so sorry about the quality of this bit right now. It's always so jarring when I like switch between my phone and my camera. But yeah, I thought I would show you how I start to film something. This is just a stand that I had on one of my old ring lights and it fits my camera. So I thought why not keep that. For ring lights and things, I use an umbrella light. I do have an umbrella down here. And I can also show you how I use the umbrella light later when I do the green screen thing because it'll most likely be dark then and I'm just using the natural lighting from the window at the minute so I don't need the umbrella light or anything right now. I've made myself a fresh cup of coffee ready to go. As I have said I don't script unless it's like a skit but I do have a sort of how I want to approach the introduction. I just write down some bullet points, some things about the series that I might want to mention, dates, you know and kind of like a like say for the introduction i've got to take the thumbnail image first and foremost because the amount of times i end up forgetting to take a thumbnail image it's ridiculous so i need to make sure that i do that first introduce the vlog series concept of reading a full series in one video so you know introduce like what i'm doing because i do complete series vlogs all the time so you know just introduce that and other ones that i've done in the past what inspired the vlog etc etc introducing the series what it's about who wrote it anything of note about that especially since this one was written by two different authors you know just like random shit like that and i will most likely just sit here and film i have found like doing it from here is kind of like a good little sort of backdrop so that you can see different things in the background. I feel like background in videos is super important these days. And the fact that it's right in front of the uh, window and the fact that th I'm bloody moving. This chair, I need a different chair. This is like a secondhand chair of my brother. It's very creaky and it just won't stop rolling around the place. So I need to find a much better chair to use. But yes, I do like having this background when I do a video and with the windows right in front of me here as well, the natural light is pretty good too. So I'll put you down somewhere so that you can watch me do some filming. Make sure the microphone is on as well. The amount of times I keep forgetting that. And yes, I'm just wearing pajama bottoms. <laughs> it's a little bit bright right now, so I'll just fix that. Don't want you really to be able to see the table is the only thing. So I do sometimes. Don't always... Right, okay, let's move it a little bit long. A little bit like here, maybe. Da, 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 da. Gotta get all hyped up. Always make sure I click record. I like having the stand to be a bit higher up so that I'm looking up while I'm filming. Helps with this. Okay, I feel like the location is all good. Let's uh, do the thumbnail. Okay. Click record, always important. And let's do the thumbnail. Now I've already kind of started working on the thumbnail so I kind of know where I want to be positioned and sort of like how I should look so that I'm not covering something else up on the thumbnail. Usually I do click record and then I'll pause and do some kind of thumbnail look and then I end up screenshotting it, putting it on the thumbnail essentially. So I'm gonna try different ways of approaching this. I'll move a bit further back so that I have more room to work with. Oh my god, I forgot to turn the printer off. <sighs> this is so odd. It's honestly like the oddest part of doing a video is taking the thumbnail. Oh. I also need to make sure that the light doesn't glare on the spines of the book, otherwise I won't be able to see it in the thumbnail. So I also need to position that well too. Okay. That'll do. <laughs> I'm sure one of them will be fine. <laughs> I always have to have a hot drink as well for beginning a video or two. I don't know why. I think it's kind of like a comfort thing for me. Having a nice hot cup of coffee as I'm starting a video, it just relaxes me a bit, you know? It, it feels comforting. Honestly, this is so strange and I need a better chair. I hate this chair so much. Oh, okay, okay. Let's start this off then. Is there anything else I need to do before I start? I don't think so. Hi everyone, welcome or welcome back to How to Train Your Gavin. In today's video, oh, see, and then there's a squeak. There's a squeak. Shh. I need to stay so perfectly still. <clears throat> <laughs> this is honestly so weird. I still haven't gotten used to speaking to a camera, by the way. 
you know, I feel a lot more confident than I was like four years ago when I started, but it's still really bizarre, okay? That feeling never goes away. You just get used to it, you know? Hi everyone, welcome or welcome back to How Train Your Gavin. In today's video, I'm going to be doing another complete series reading vlog. I always end up like pausing, recollecting my thoughts. Uh, all of this I can just like edit, you know, and just put together, but ah, in the past, I have done reading vlogs for Pretty Little Liars. Hang on. Pretty Little, I forgot what I've done. Pretty Little Liars, Gossip Girl. I need to sort of like relate to this vlog, which is Secret Circle, Young Adult. So Young Adult stuff I've done. Yeah, Pretty Little Liars, Gossip Girl, Heartstopper, Vampire Diaries. Okay. In the past, I've done reading vlogs for Pretty Little Liars, Gossip Girl, Heartstopper. Oh, God damn it. In the past, I've done reading vlogs for... Oh, See, this is why I mean, I keep doing this. Like, this is why it takes ages for me to film. I have to like repeat myself, repeat myself, repeat myself. And I just mess up the most basic of sentences so many times. Okay. In the past, I have done reading vlogs for Prilla Liars, Gossip Girl, Heartstopper, and The Vampire Diaries. And it was actually my va and it was actually my Vampire Diaries vlog that inspired me to do this one. Oh, this is probably when I need to hold up the books. So in this video, I will be reading. I can see it in the camera. <laughs> so in this video, I will be reading all of the Secret Circle books by L.J. Smith. Smooth. I did get quite... Slide now. Hmm. I did get quite a few com... I did get quite a few comments on my... So back in January, I did make a video on the Vampire Diaries and on... So back in January, I... <laughs> Honestly, I feel like it's because you guys are watching me. Stop. <laughs> no, don't stop. I don't hardly remember what I said last. It's going to end up being like so disjointed. Anyway, I did my Vampire Diaries video back in January. And in the comments of that video, I got a lot of requests to do The Secret Circle by the same author. I'll not mention the CW TV show just yet. I will do that after the books. And I'm just reading this part out because I don't actually know what the books are about just yet. It could be totally different from the TV show. So I do have a little bit of a summary that I try to... say I hate reading off the backs of books and I hate reading off a piece of paper. So I have to regurgitate it. I need to take it in, regurgitate. So Cassie Blake initiated into a circle of 11 other teenage witches and the danger that ensues when they accidentally unleash a dark force upon their town. If I can say that word for word without looking, then that would be great. Cassie Blake initiated into a circle of 11 other teenage witches and the danger that ensues when they accidentally unleash a dark force upon their town. This series follows a young girl called Cassie Blake. Hang on. This series is a series of young adult books and it follows Cassie Blake, who is initiated into a circle of 11 other teenage witches. And unfortunately, they do end up unleashing darkness upon their town. Matters are further complicated when Cassie finds herself in a love triangle that threatens to, threatens, threatens to tear the circle apart. Matters are further complicated when Cassie finds herself in a love triangle that threatens to tear the circle apart. Okay, I still can't get it. Matters are further complicated when Cassie finds herself in a love triangle that threatens to tear the circle apart. I'm just going to try and say this one word for word. Matters are further complicated when Cassie finds herself in a love triangle that threatens to tear the circle apart. Matters are further complicated when Cassie finds herself in a love triangle that threatens to tear the circle apart. Did I get that right? <laughs> that never usually happens. This series, this series is written by the same author as The Vampire Diaries, L.J. Smith, but only... Hmm, hang on. Written right after L.J. Smith finished the original Vampire Diaries book. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, this, so yeah, this book series is written by the same author as The Vampire Diaries, and she wrote these white... White? Yes, the... <laughs> what am I desperate? I'm literally turning into Mary Alice Young. Yes. This series was written by... <laughs> yes, this series was written by the same author as The Vampire Diaries, and she wrote these right after writing The Vampire Diaries in the early 90s. L.J. Smith wrote the first four books, and then we have another writer called Aubrey Clark. She ended up writing the final three books. L.J. Smith wrote The Initiation, The Captive Part 1, the Captive Part 2 and The Power. The Captive Part The Captive Parts 1 and 2 are usually put together when people talk about the Secret Circle series. So usually the So usually it's said that there are six Secret Circle books, not seven. However, it is split into two in the visions that I have, so I'm just gonna go with seven books. 
and LJ Smith wrote the first four in the era of 1992, which happened to be the era I was born. It was all 1992, yes. Yes, it was. Oh, pardon me. Before I talk about the last three books, actually, it's important to note that the CW commissioned a TV show of The Secret Circle at the same time. No, that's wrong. It wasn't at the same time, it was years later. See, I've got to be careful of the glare on the books too. So, there we go. And The Temptation. So it doesn't surprise me at all that they did ask Aubrey Clark to write. So it didn't surprise me at all. So it didn't surprise me at all that they got another author to continue the Secret Circle books. However, I don't think they were counting on the... However, I don't think they were counting on the fact I'm sitting so ungracefully right now as well. Oh my gosh. You can't say any of that though in the Secret Circle video. <laughs> and before I get into reading all of these books, don't forget to leave this video a like if you enjoyed and subscribe if you haven't already. Same goes for you. <laughs> okay, then let's get to reading. No, oh God, my God, that sounded so scripted. Okay, let's get to reading. That'll do. That will do. Ah. And there we go. That is how I usually film. I will most likely cut that introduction down to hopefully around about seven minutes. I feel like that's probably the best time for an introduction, especially since the Secret Circle video will most likely be an hour and a half, maybe. Probably just as long as the Vampire Diaries video, even though Vampire Diaries had way more books. As I said, I got ill during that, so I did rush that one. So we'll just see how we get on and what makes the final cut, essentially. <laughs> I've decided actually I want to maybe make the thumbnail now just to show you how I go about doing that because I was just going to wait until tomorrow but I might as well do it now and I've already kind of like made the like this so far. I don't like love 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 it but I, I made it a little while back actually and I was like so pumped to do this video and usually when I make a thumbnail first it gets me even more hyped to make the video so I just downloaded like all of these images off Google and they are really good because they don't have a background on them. So like this is essentially just what I've got so far. So all I need to do now is to put me in there. So I do have this which is my Final Cut Pro. This is where I make all of my videos and I have like projects on this side. Some I've already done but I like to keep them there just for now in case I need to copy and paste any of the things that I put in them. Like for example like One Piece I do have like something like this, where I have a progress bar kind of thing. So going back to Secret Circle then, this is the footage I imported. I film in 4K and upload in 4K. So that usually does take a bit of a while, <laughs> but this is when I've taken the thumbnails. So yeah, as you can see, it's just like, <laughs> it's so dumb. It's so dumb. Uh, all right, and I just kind of, slide along until I find a look that I like and I just feel like I look so stupid. But I like to take different faces just in case like I hate the books and so I will do a face where I look a little bit repulsed. And then if I love the books I've got like, you know, a hey! But you know what, even then, even if I hate Secret Circle, I don't know, I, I this looks fine. So I'll just take a screenshot of, of this so that I can use that maybe. Uh, Oh, looking down on it doesn't look too bad, actually. We can screenshot that too. Nice to have, you know, some variety. Uh, just a normal smile in case the other ones I think look too dumb. Screenshot that. Uh, da, 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 da. Um, see, I don't, oh my god, I just look, I don't like any of these faces. I don't like any of those faces at all. I'll just add that to there. All right, so I've added that. I like to put myself, I might have to put myself right in front. Firstly, I need to, yeah, I've decided to go on for the one with just the smile. I think that's just, when I try and make a face and I look silly, I don't like it. So I'm just gonna cut around me. I'm sure there are easier ways of doing stuff that I do. I just have a system, okay? <laughs> Inverse, that, there we go. And now I can place myself. I do like, like I don't mind covering the logo. Just like, do I want to cover the logo? Essentially, maybe somewhere like here. And obviously I'll cut myself like down around the edges. This is just like trying to find out where I'm gonna put myself. I, I just, I don't know. I don't know if I like the overall look of it, in all honesty. 
because the books really need to be more front and center. I'm just like showing you guys how I go about doing my thumbnails. So even if this doesn't stick, it's fine. So I do put out a glow on it and a shadow so that I can see better when I, you know, use the eraser around me. Yeah, that'll do. Uh, <laughs> I'll zoom right in. As much as I don't want to because I hate seeing myself that close. And then I literally just painstakingly cut around myself. And again, I'm sure there are easier ways of doing this, but I like being in control of how I cut around myself because I'm sure there are automated programs that do it. I feel like sometimes they might cut a bit too much. It might look too cut out. I don't know. I don't know what I'm thinking. But I just like to be in control of how I cut the, the thumbnail, essentially. Or me in the thumbnail. I much prefer doing it on my own. See, so yeah, I put a little, a little bit too much there, didn't I? But I like to make sure that's rounded, that it doesn't look silly. Almost like I, I belong on this thumbnail, you know? So maybe I do accidentally, or even sometimes intentionally cut things out. Like if I have a shirt on and it's sticking out too much, then I'll cut out the part of the shirt that sticks out too much, you know? But I don't like give myself muscles or anything, so... <laughs> You've just gotta judge it by the thumbnail, like how it should look. And, oh, so yeah, just... It's so hard as well to do a straight line sometimes. Which is why when I do, like say if I had the books here instead of there, it would be so much harder to cut around them because you have to be so solid in how you cut it down to make sure that it looks right, you know? And I, I cut off a little bit of my shoulder there just to make it look straighter, you know? I just don't want it to look silly. That's the thing. Usually doing my hair as well can be kind of tricky, but I feel like because I've got such a black solid background there, I feel like it's fine. But I do have a really odd hairstyle, is in like it comes out a little bit there. And sometimes you can see what's behind me there and I don't like that. So I have to like seriously cut down my fringe to make sure that you can't see the actual background. Whereas this is this one's fine. This one's not that tricky. It's a lot more straightforward than other ones I've done. In fact, yeah, this is definitely a lot more straightforward. So I am impressed with myself. I don't mind having a little bit of a jagged approach to the hair bit because, as I said, like my hair is a little bit all over the place. But yeah, I just wanted it to look like a bit natural, so I might just like do my own kind of... I don't know, does that look okay? I never know these things. And like, now I can see that little bit of dry skin there too. Ugh. And this, that's that's my beard. That's my beard there. But it looks... And that, oh, oh, oh. I hate having a beard sometimes. What are we thinking? What are we thinking? I feel like I might have to bring the rectangle forward so that it goes in front of the characters, so it looks like they're behind, whereas I'm in front, so that looks a little bit more 3D. The thing I don't love is the logo. Like, but if I make myself smaller, I'm taking away the attention being on the books, you know? Oh, I don't know what to do. Asia takes me a good few hours to really think of the concept of one of these. Should I just take off these characters? Should I only have a couple of characters? Maybe it's too many characters, actually. Then I'm like, who do I take off? Maybe I should just have four characters. So let's just get rid of her, get rid of her. And then I can make this secret circle bigger. Maybe have it like this. Maybe... Oh, see, I can't really cut that logo up because of the R thing being the way it is. Let me try this. Let's just C and then V. Like that. Oh, 
I say it's gotten rid of the actual like what I've done to the layer. So out of glow, two, one. Shadow is a sixteen twenty four eighty four sixteen twenty four eighty four sixteen twenty four. I feel like maybe oh no hang on that looks okay that looks about right okay and then I just put me back here. Like I need to be the focus. Where's the middle? Middle of the thumbnail, I don't know. Let's just put me. Yeah, I don't think that's central. I feel like that's more central, isn't it? As long as you just get to say the secret part there. And then I will cut this part out. What in the world? What? Why is that making it red? Should be a razor. That should be. What is. What is going on? Oh, there we go. Right, making, right, so I'm getting rid of that bit there. And then putting circle here. I feel like that's far too big. That's that like right size. Something like that. And then have that like that. Secret circle. And then that kind of gets rid of the problem of there being me in the way. I feel like circle should be a little bit bigger because it takes up, it has to take up more space. So that looks fine, right? That looks fine. No, I'm gonna cut this little bit off there too. And I think that's where the circle bit is. So if I do a bit of this, does that look better? And then I just have four characters instead of six because I feel like six is probably a bit too much. But I've got to have like the main iconic characters, you know. Gotta have, gotta have those in. Uh, like two guys on one side and two girls on the other, I guess. And you're probably wondering like, why am I putting the TV show characters on when I'm reading the books and stuff? But it's part of what makes the Secret Circle iconic is the fact that it did get made into a TV show, you know? Uh, does this look okay? It looks like they're, they're looking at each other, so I guess yes. That will do. And I'll change it up, I'll do different things to it before then. But this is kind of like what goes into a thumbnail, essentially. Oops. Uh, minus 90. Like that maybe? Right, yeah, so that's kind of what goes into a thumbnail. Well, a little part of it anyway. It's time to film the green screen effect. I'm just using my Casey Becker wig. I'm not buying a whole new wig for Mary Alice Young. I'm sorry. But I do have my green screen thing here that I will set up. I did used to have just a sheet, a green sheet that I would hang from the bookshelves which was honestly a pain in the ass and it would be such a nightmare because it would usually just fall down or it would just create so much mess so now i do have one that i can just like stand up on its own uh it makes things so much easier so i'll just do that i think that'll be tall enough for it won't it and yeah just comes up like this So this is probably where it's gonna be a little bit shit. Oh, actually, I might have to, okay, because you do need to be able to see my feet as well, ish. Yeah. Okay, I wanna see if I can grab that sheet, the green screen sheet. So this might end up not looking great. And yeah, you can see the desk and everything in the way. That's fine, it's the only place I can think of to do it. And it's only just for a brief scene, okay, so. I feel like this will have to do. And what I have to do really is like walk. Because when I watch the actual scene, I'm only doing the green screen for the first bit. And Mary Alice comes through the door. Hey, it's Mary Alice. I'm Kate. I was watching. You know, 
and then she looks around and then I need to sort of turn around and then look down. <laughs> this is so silly. How, right, how, how many seconds do I need to be looking around? So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then at the eighth second, I need like kind of turn. So, one, two, three. So about three seconds, I need to be like back to the camera. About three or four seconds back to the camera and then sort of start looking down like this okay so I'm down like this and the way that I need to film it is that Mary Alice goes I need to mirror it so that is hang on, Brenda it's Brenda Strong's right shoulder arm comes forward as she's turning because obviously I don't have a camera following me, so I need to manually move me. So I need to do all the movements myself. And she has her right shoulder. So eight seconds, three seconds, look down. Okay, I'll just see how we get on. And if I need to flip it, I'll flip it. So, okay. <laughs> My name is Gavin Mary Alice Young Heatherington. When you scroll through YouTube, you may come across an unusual video in your subscription feed that I filmed last week. Normally, oh, I, haven't. I haven't thought about it. so I do the shoulder thing and then I have to like turn pretty much a 180 okay it's actually kind of hard <laughs> trying to put it together it's because the camera moves right around her right shoulder when the camera turns so I'm gonna have to like do a complete turn and then that is her left yes I'm facing the right way okay let's try again let's try again start again I lost count Okay, I've done that a couple of times. Let's import it, see if it works. If not, we'll do it again. I don't know if any of this is interesting in the slightest, but this is how I go about doing the green screen bit. So I want to mute the music for now in me talking because we don't need to hear that right now. Well, I've imported all the footage and I believe it was this take that I think was the best take. Do you know when you just see it, it just like, it looks terrible just like on the screen. And this is where I pretty much start. So, I've probably done it like the wrong way too. When I think about like when, when I turn. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. Uh, that's probably all the time we need. So let me just put it over where I'm supposed to go. Okay, actually no, first. I need to, one, crop it down, crop it right down. Okay, so as you can see there, I need to do that. Have I, uh, see what I mean about like how awkward and difficult this is. Okay, let's just do that. Um, see, this is all I'm left with. This is the window I have, because if I get rid of the, the table there, and I think when I bend over, I go over that. Let's let's check. So this is all I'm allowed. So see if I stay within that, please, Gav, please. Oh my god, you absolute beauty. Okay, I did, but also I can see I can still see some stuff there. Okay, perfection. Perfection. Uh right now I can I mean the timing might be off. It usually is when I do stuff like this. So I can just do the Kia effect and hopefully, oh my God. So yeah, what it's done to the bottom there because it's like a whole different color, it looks awful. All color has kind of been drained from my face. So I'll try the Mac Tools thing. This usually helps. I'll do a bit of that. Not too much, it does get rid of a bit too much there. Okay, so it's not gonna be perfect. <laughs> Already I know it's not going to be perfect. Okay, when you say, I mean, to be fair, you'll only be able to say, oh, but look at my hair. My hair is now awful because of that. It's a very short 
segment. Like, this is the only green screen I need to do. But it's a pain in the ass. And I, I now I've got, like, pink hair. It's made my hair look a bit pink. I might have to just cut my feet off. Not gonna lie. I might just have to cut them off. Like, who's really gonna look? Other than you guys, of course. So, so let's just see how that looks. Because also the fact that I'm going to be making myself even smaller. So Mary Alice first appears like pretty much here. And I want to be in front of her. So I will move myself so I'm in front of her. Uh, okay, yeah, my time is a bit off. So I'll just cut that down even more. So when does she turn? When, when can I turn? Okay, there. Okay, perf, perf. Uh, okay, kind of, kind of. Maybe if I do a little bit more there. Okay. Mm, I'm quite slow there. I wonder... I might make myself faster then. Custom. Whew. Honestly, you should have seen me trying to do this with Mamma Mia. And I had so many scenes where I had to like do all the dancing and stuff. It was just an absolute joke. Uh, 120. Let's try that. 120. Okay. Is that too fast? Hang on, I can... I just need the turn bit, essentially. I can sort that bit out. Turn. There we go. No. Turn. Okay, I feel like that's probably going to be the best. No, I can probably make it a little bit faster. Uh, custom. A bit, a bit faster. One, three, five, maybe. Try that. Okay, turn. Yep, yep, yep. Oh, that's maybe a bit too fast, but then I bend down at the right time. So I feel like that's more important. Me bending down at the right time. And then zooming in, and then I can, so I can minimize that bit there. So this is where I go up to. Yep. And then my first appearance is, oh, oh, I mean, that was when I was getting prepared. Because I made it faster, it's like, you know what I mean? Oh, okay, it's fine. Right now, what I have to do is put me over here and move me manually. Honestly, you're thinking like, this is just an absolute faff and you're right. You are absolutely right. So yeah, I don't have any feet. You're just gonna have to deal with that. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Mary Alice Young. So I have to like pretty much be over here the entire time. So just, obviously like I will be moving myself to cover her. I'll show you how I do that in a second, but I'm just making sure that the size of me is correct. Okay, I think that's probably like the correct size. Okay, and you get to the very start of when I appear. This is the absolute fanny of a job. So I need to click this button here. So this is a keyframe and that means I start in this position and now I can just move along a bit and move myself so now like that keyframe keeps me in that place <laughs> because I'm moving myself manually I need to make sure that I move with the camera and this is what I have to do for that. This is going this may take a little while. And it's also a pain in the butt when I have to like make myself bigger, keep myself in front of Mary Alice. Bear in mind, Mamma Mia, I did three characters. Mind you, I would do that again. It was so fun. I do find this fun. It just, a lot of the times it's also tedious. And it probably also move me a little bit more center there as well. I might have to start making myself bigger with the camera zooming in so that I'm also Zoom in with the camera. My name is Mary Alicia. Why do I keep saying that over and over? Please, nobody give me grief for having no feet.
Let's test that out, see if it works. Just in all the feet. <laughs> Just as long as I stay in front of Mary Alice the entire time, you never see her face. And that's fine. Okay. Okay. Um, obviously, like, I can't change anything about like how blurry that gets. That'll do, Donkey. That will do. And why do I say that to everything? Everything. I was gonna say today is like a dressing gown kind of day as in I don't really plan on filming very much anything I mean there might be something later on that I can film to do with the secret circle vlog I feel like today I can just wear what I want it's a non-school uniform kind of day for me so I've made myself my second cup of coffee of the day what did I do this morning I did get out of bed around about 10, which in my mind is still nine o'clock before daylight savings. <laughs> I was just watching some YouTube as I had my first cup of coffee, had a snuggle with my baby boy, Ash. We always snuggle first thing in the morning. It's like our little thing. I think what I will show you this morning is my planning, I guess, because there are some things coming up that I need to see if I need to plan anything for. So usually I do just use my notes app and like at three o'clock in the morning when I have an idea, I'll make a new note and just like, put a lot of random stuff in there. But I have made like a, a proper-ish document for this video. So I will show you that and go through it now. I don't know if you can really say a whole lot right now. <laughs> That's fine. So yeah, these are the kind of videos that I'm planning on doing this month. When I sit down, I try and think, okay, how can I film this? And how long will it take to film? How long will it take to edit? And the most important thing, how long will it take me to read, you know, because I am a book channel and I do have to base my content around books. I have this as my sort of template and I have my, my Patreon and channel member plans down here as well. But just looking at content, I did just get an email from the sort of sponsor of today's video, FlexiSpot, and they've approved, they have approved the opening, they've approved the ad part. And they said I can post it earlier because it originally it was going to go up on the 22nd. They said I can post it earlier, which is fantastic because that sorts out so many of my problems that I had. And I think maybe I will make it my next video, which is a pain in the butt really because that means I have nothing else to post this week. And when it comes, to, and I can go into this a bit more in depth later, when it comes to, you know, like uploading weekly, it's something that you have to be really conscious about whether you go a whole week without uploading anything. So I did upload something yesterday, which was my One Piece Punk Hazard arc video, which I'd had made since the third, like it had been up for early access since the third. So this one, I can now put it up on May 15th. So just going through like this video, say I have my filming dates May 8th through the 12th. That's my kind of plan editing it the 13th to the 14th and then uploading it on the 15th. So I will see if I can try and do that a little bit earlier so I can get early access, I cannot type, early access up for my patrons like the day before. I usually like to have at least like 24 hours early access and like say for One Piece, I do usually have like about five days early access. So yeah, I think May 15th, now that's been approved and I'm allowed to post it earlier, uh, that helps so much because now I can spend a bit more time on the Secret Circle vlog. I don't need to rush it. So I can move that one back a little bit. But then I do have that, which I do want to upload for One Piece. See, this is the thing. It would be great if I could have uploaded something this week. I just don't have the time. I don't have the time. I could try and maybe do my Dress Rosa arc video instead of reading some Secret Circle this week and then post that at the end of next week, maybe. So I might have to change this around. And then do it so it's early access for, yeah. See, so this is why it's like such a, a struggle sometimes when I try and think of the things that I'm doing in a certain month. I'll figure that out at some point. And then also this month I have, like this can't change because the like this is when I'm going. I'm staying at a library for two nights to solve a Nagatha Christie mystery. And you know, the filming dates will be May 19th to the 20th. I'll have my editing May 20th to the 21st. Early access for patrons on May 22nd and upload it on May 24th. 
Uh, so maybe I could put Secret Circle on like May 21st, maybe. I don't know yet, I don't know. I also have a par for notes, so if I need to do anything for that video, I will put it here. So Desperate Housewives opening, done. Promoter segment, done. Film my way through the week, I haven't finished that, so I can strike through those two because I've done those. Okay, perfect, and I'm still working on that. So say like the next thing I really need to do this month for my overnight in the library to solve Agatha Christie Mysteries. I've booked my stay at the library, so that's all sorted, but I haven't booked my trains yet. I haven't booked my trains yet. I am hosting a sort of Patreon read-along as well, where we're all going to try and solve the mystery of it at this library. So I do need to schedule those. I do have it on here as well, so I know exactly what we need to do. So I will schedule those at some point too. But I think booking the trains is something that I like really need to do. So I will do that now. I won't show it on the screen because it might give away some of my like details, my personal details. So I will do that today. I will book my trains for the library today. A lot of it is just like reading and things. Another One Piece video. I don't know if I'll be able to do this Berserk video this month. I just, when I think I also have to write 20,000 words for Wattpad because I, I do work for Wattpad in a way. I think this is my last month writing. I have to do like 5,000 words a month, but I've left so much of it to the last minute that I need to now do 20,000 words this month. And I have to by the end of this month, like it, it's, it just has to do it. So I haven't factored in that either. I also have a reading fairy tales that inspired the Disney Renaissance movies because the new Little Mermaid film's coming out. So I thought I might as well try and do that too. I was going to extend that. I was going to try and do like Tarzan, Hunchback of Notre Dame, but I just don't think I have time to read full length novels for that. So I'm going to change it to just like the fairy tales aspect of it so I can include The Little Mermaid and I'll have that done at some point too. And I don't think I've given myself any days off, but to be fair, at the start here, around about, I would say probably like May 4th, 5th and 7th, are the days I've given myself off this month. And yeah, you know, May 7th was my birthday. And then I do have like it for all of the months coming up. Like these are all subject to change, of course. And you know, just like a little sneak peek of what's to come. I haven't really sorted all of this out. I mean, I might have to spend May 30th to the 31st reading Blood on the Tracks for a full reading vlog for that next month. And also I have booked my stay at 30 East Drive. I have done that. So, oh my God. So I can, so like, you know, I'll probably just go through this today and see what I need to do for each video and how long it'll take. Like this one's gonna take at least a week as well because it's quite a big video reading all eight books by the Bronte sisters. These are just tentative dates. I don't think I'll be able to get them done specifically on these dates. You know, that's when I want to upload them. It all depends on early access videos. It depends on what I'm doing for Patreon. For my channel members. Some just take longer than others. <laughs> and a lot of the videos I do are like two hours long. So yeah, uh, July, August, September, October. Uh, these are all subject to change as well. I take these with a grain of salt, but I will say I've started planning and getting things sorted for my September, October spooky vlogs. So say like this one, how many charm books can I read in one week? And when it, I, I, that will probably change the title as well, but I'm reading Charmed that week. But I, had an idea of using Cameo, which is a website where you can get a celebrity to send you a video. I had that idea and there are two charmed ones on Cameo. And I just got back Rose McGowan's video. I'll not play it now, but I do have a video from Rose McGowan to include in that video. Listen to this, isn't it? It's so cool. Hi Gavin, it's Rose McGowan from Charmed, Miss Page. <laughs> Isn't that like so cool? So like I've started to like plan and get things sorted for like September, October, my spooky videos, and that's gonna be like one of them. So book Rose McGowan through Cameo done. I've requested Holly Marie Coombs and yeah, I'm just waiting for that one. It is a little bit unorganized. I would love for someone to organize some kind of spreadsheet where I can really organize this a lot better. But like this is just like how I'm functioning right now, uh, and yeah, so, you know, and I sometimes just have a random idea, and I'm like, where will that fit? Sometimes they won't fit anywhere. Like, say, for example, reading all 51 original Fiesta Street books, I feel like I need to start that now, because there's 51 books, and I was thinking, oh, should I read it all in August? But then I need to come up with other ideas during August to upload, otherwise, 
my ad sales and ad revenue will just plummet. I had a random idea to do read a one-star prediction in a one-star hotel, which is a leftover idea I had from last year, which I cancelled. I'll end up cancelling videos, I'll end up changing videos, but at the minute, this is how it looks planning-wise. And I will probably go more in depth with how I plan and stuff later on because I have just put a QA and a up on my community tab on YouTube. So in case anyone has any questions, I can do that and show them. But yeah, this is probably just what I'm going to do. I'll book trains for future videos. I will go through my plan, see if there's anything I need to do immediately. Uh, schedule sprints and things with patrons. Just like random, random things like that. I might also like start editing the Secret Circle vlog maybe. Because right now I'm not really in the mood to read. So if I get my planning and stuff done relatively quick. Which it will not take long to do, honestly. Because I, I kind of go through this every morning. Where I just sit here, I think, and I stew. <laughs> And I sometimes you just like spend like an hour just like thinking ahead essentially and what needs to be done. And sometimes I do have a crisis where I'm like, oh, but I won't be able to fit this in. I won't have time to do that. How am I supposed to read all of that in this short amount of time to get it up for that date and stuff. But like I need to make sure that I'm constantly on it so that when I do upload something, it will go without a hitch. And sometimes as well, like I'll put so much time and effort into a video and it doesn't do as well as I think and then other videos I don't put that much time and effort into and that does the best you know and sometimes that means I have to rethink how I approach other videos say for example my gossip girl video I spend pretty much all of February reading those books I put up my video and to be fair that video is currently sitting at 77,000 views which is incredible and that was uploaded two months ago but to compare that with a video I did two weeks ago, which I filmed all in one day, I read the book in one day, it was like such a last minute thing because I was just in the mood to do it. And that is my TikTok doc romance video. That is currently sitting at 55,000 views, which is like less than the Gossip Girl video. So it hasn't done better. But when you think about like two months, Gossip Girl is at 77,000 and the TikTok romance one is at 55,000 in two weeks. You know, it probably will end up overtaking it, maybe by the end of this month. You just kind of have to go with the flow in what you upload. You have to, like, change your mind and your schedule and your plans. Like, it is a constant thing where nothing is set in stone. YouTube itself is not set in stone. Being a content creator is not the most stable of jobs at all. But you just kind of have to, like, keep working, adapting, and essentially being in the algorithms, bitch. And, like, I'm not even, like, planning another dark romance video. I don't even know what I would read for it. But the fact that that one has had, you know, such a good reception and so many views in such a short amount of time, I'm like, well, you know, maybe I should do another one. And maybe I will. But what I loved about doing the first one is that it was just the spur of the moment nature of it. I honestly just woke up that day. I was like, I have, like, time today and tomorrow. I could just read something for fun. And I was like, well, why don't I just uh, read this and do a vlog out of it? You know, it's just like, it was like the most last minute thing. I didn't plan it at all. And uh, it was so fun to do. I love doing stuff like that. So I try to allow myself to do that. But as you can see with my schedule, that's not usually that possible. But sometimes I kind of like squeeze something in. And I will probably end up changing something in a future month to accommodate how the algorithm plays me. Because I am playing the algorithm. Helping me work today, are you? <laughs> Such a beautiful man. Such a beautiful man. Belly ropes. Belly ropes. Let's take your son to work day today, isn't it? Take your son to work day. Do you want the phone? Do you want the phone, do you? You're not allowed one until you're older. Okay. Thank you. So beautiful. <laughs> You know, I'm just going to show you very briefly, like, just, like, a normal editing of something rather than, like, the green screen stuff. Firstly, off the bat, using Final Cut Pro, I do have all of my projects on the side here, which I think I've already mentioned, so I'll not mention again. I have renamed the clips that I use. Some of them are from my mobile, so I have to 
airdrop them onto the computer so that I can, you know, include them here. I just make sure that everything's imported as I go along. I have my sort of theme thing there as well, always. I'll turn it up a bit now. And like, I'll just like show you very briefly what I start to do. Hopefully you, you guys like it. I cut out the part where I took the thumb. Well, actually, I didn't even take a thumbnail. <laughs> you know how I said, write down, do a thumbnail and stuff. I've totally forgotten to do that. Firstly, actually as well, I usually do a fade out and then for, like from the intro, theme song, whatever, to a fade in. So it kind of like blends in together kind of thing. It's a really silly little thing but I do it all the time so what I do is I just like watch through it I'll make cuts let's just have it because this is a sort of behind the scenes week of my life kind of video but there was a just a gap you know wherever I like don't talk or like say here if I breathe um maybe I might have to keep that one in because it's continuing the sentence but that breath there that breath there I can cut that out and also I'll probably just because I like having like maybe like a zoom or just like different, you know, like uh, focus whenever I'm talking. Because if I'm doing a sit down video and it's just constantly nothing changing, just me talking, I worry that people will be bored with that. So every now and then I might have a zoom in and, you know, just to change it up a little bit. And I don't do it just like on random sentences because sometimes that can be really jarring. But like if it makes sense... Like whether it's like a sentence on its own or if it's like maybe a joke, I will either like zoom in on it or, you know, just to like break up the, just the sitting down bit. Listen to this. Start recording properly. So like this is going to be the most unglamorous week of my life you will ever see. And I really do want... And because I cut out the breath there, it goes like straight into the next sentence. You can see where there's like loads of gaps where, I mean, there's me just... Picking something out my eye, really. <laughs> so obviously that's not staying in. Like if I cough, that'll go out. If I sneeze, if I'm pulling off cat hair from my tongue, that will all get cut, essentially. So I'll just continue from there. And I really do want to show you like the genuine side of... I stumble over my own words so much too. All of it will have to go. So like, for example... And that includes, and that includes the fact that I really do struggle... And that includes, and that includes... And that includes... includes. So sometimes I say things twice, just, I, I don't know. I don't know. I think I have ADHD. <laughs> yeah, I have to make these decisions where, is it like too jarring a cut? Then I'll try and make it work. But yeah, it is what it is. And maybe this breath too. Being a full-time inside of being a full-time youtuber youtuber whatever it is and that includes the fact that i really do struggle with dry skin especially on my forehead and eyebrows so so uh, the especially on my forehead and eyebrows i can zoom in on that and i can get rid of that part there my forehead and eyebrows and also so before i go like i just have to double check make sure anything else yes also, oh. yeah. i can do that okay. so do i do a zoom zoom like this where I just like, and honestly it's just like so minuscule a thing to do that it's like, I do nothing fancy really. But it just makes a, a bit of a difference. Skin, especially on my forehead and eyebrows. So Yeah, I will, I will have it as a zoom in, that one. Either it's like a stationary zoomed in or I zoom in, you know. I don't know like the correct terminologies. <laughs> you also don't want to do too many of them because that can be a little bit too much. Even then, I always seem to miss something and like... Which is why sometimes I go back and watch. <laughs> and this is honestly like the most tedious job it's ever, but I love it. I love editing. I love making videos so much. Especially so there's a zoom there, zoomed in there. Okay, I feel like that's probably not too much actually. So I'll stop him here. With dry skin, especially on my forehead and eyebrows. So before I go live, I just have to double check and make sure. And even then, like I'm just looking in the camera. Even then. Yeah, that's fine. You know, like I really do have to try and judge. Am I doing too many zooms? Well, I have had comments in the past being like, oh my God, like 
I'm getting motion sickness from the amount of zooms you're doing, Gavin. <laughs> so, like, I have to be, like, really mindful of my audience and making sure that I'm not doing too much, you know? You don't have to do too much. It doesn't have to be really flashy and fancy. Just as long as you're keeping things moving and flowing well, it can really make a huge difference to your video. So, yeah, this is just, like, a standard introduction. And, yeah, just by having, like, these little zooms and stuff, Hopefully it makes it less boring because I don't want people to tune out during the introduction because when you see on a graph like where people you know tune out of your video it usually is during the introduction so you're gonna have to like try and make it quick and witty. A lot of the times I do seem to smack my lips before talking and it's something I never noticed until I edit and I hate it so much. It's just like when I open my mouth it just seems like an automatic sound that comes from my lips and I have misophonia so whenever I hear that coming from myself it honestly does make me want to scratch my skin off. Like even when I hear like other people like eating or if I hear like the, the mouth sounds which is weird because I do like ASMR mouth sounds. <laughs> I do kind of like that. I like it when it's like purposeful and stuff, but like hearing, like hearing me do this, it just, oh my God, it gets under my skin. Ugh, see if you can listen to this. I was supposed to- can, can, Did you hear that? Uh, uh, it's tiny, it's like a little thing, but it's something I notice and it's something I do. And I edit every single one of those out that I possibly can. I have to do that, so. I was supposed to do this back. Um, right, so I'm gonna, yeah, I'll just like edit it here um, because then I start talking. Video. I was supposed to do this. Say like how quick it is to go into that. So like you're not wasting any time. There's no gaps. There's no lip smacking. <laughs> and yeah, so I actually, I, I think that's enough uh, showing you how I edit. I'm about to do my B-roll, so I'm gonna show you how I do my music. So I pretty much use Epidemic Sound. Yeah, it's a really great place to find music. I honestly love Epidemic Sound, not sponsored. But uh, let's see if we can find a good tune for the B-roll. Let's try this one. Uh, hasn't grabbed me just yet. Oh. It's probably a, maybe a bit too much, I guess, for the B-roll, maybe, I don't know. Let's try this one. Oh. Oh, okay, I kind of like this one. Right, okay. You know what, I'm very easily pleased. This is the one. Hiya Ash, I was just about to do a last update and then I'll come in, I'll play with you again. We are nearing the end of Tuesday and I ended up editing more of the video. I just 
fancy doing some more editing. And then I ended up making myself a HelloFresh meal. And I'm still quite new with HelloFresh and I have done, you know what, I would say a stand-up job. You know, I'm terrible at cooking. I haven't been cooking in the longest time. I mainly just stick to the air fryer or putting like some chicken nuggets in the oven. Like that's what I usually do. But for the past, I would say a month, I've been using HelloFresh not sponsored. And the thing I made today was really good. And then I ate it and I felt way too full. So I ended up sleeping upstairs. Well, not sleeping. I had a little bit of a nap. I had a little bit of a nap with Ash and Tobu, my cats. And it was so lovely. I was spooning Ash for quite some time. And Tobu was there lying with us too. And it was just so nice. So that was nice to have a little bit of a breather to, you know, make my brain switch off for a bit and just relax. And I'm not gonna lie, like my eyes have been so tired most of today, actually. I don't feel tired, my eyes do. So it's probably best that I stay away from the screen. <laughs> like that's the last of it, like that's the last I'm doing of stuff. I did also finish reading the first book in The Secret Circle. So that is 269 pages done. And I will film my update on it for The Secret Circle vlog tomorrow. I was gonna do it tonight, I'm just a little bit too tired to do that. And I have also been doing things for Trova Trip. And if you don't know, I am hosting a trip to Japan in September. I cannot, cannot wait. Oh my gosh. I think there's only like two months left now until the trip closes for new people to apply. So I will leave a link down in the description box if you want to check it out. That's the last time. I have some incredible people coming. I have some of my personal booktube friends coming. I have some amazing subscribers coming. So I've ended up setting up a group chat on Instagram with them. I've just got a message in the group chat right now. So I've been doing some like Trova trip prep and I have booked my plane and stuff to Japan, but I need to like really sort out what I'm taking, things that I need to do to prepare. And actually I can probably ask in the group chat too. Say like there's some people who are going like going earlier and leaving later and they're like talking to each other. I love it so much. And yeah, I need to figure out all the stuff that I need to prep before that. So I will probably put in the group chat as well. Like, hey, what are we doing? How are you guys preparing? How are you taking money? Stuff like that. So I'm looking forward to doing that. But yeah, that's just another thing I've done today. That's pretty much it. It's now 11.20 p.m. And yeah, I did have a, what was it, like 12? I had a little bit of a, so like nearly like 12-ish hours, but I did take, I would say, an hour and a half out of the day for like a dinner, like for my break kind of thing. So not exactly like 12 hours. I would say I probably had a, around about like a 10 hour work day today. I need to do some like prepping. I need to schedule some live shows tomorrow. I will make a to-do list for tomorrow and we can go through it in the morning. I'm looking forward to that. The last thing I will be doing tonight, and it is something that's gonna help me relax and wind down, is I will be watching Ali from Hardback Order. She does live shows on a Tuesday and a Thursday night and a Sunday on Twitch. And she usually goes live midnight my time and I always look forward to it. On a Tuesday and a Thursday, I look forward to it after a busy work day and it's just a way of me to just wind down, relax, watch my bestie, give it her all. And it's just like the nicest time hanging out in the live chat and just watching Ali do whatever she does, whatever she feels like doing. So that's where you can usually find me on a Tuesday and a Thursday night, by the way, at midnight, my time. That's where I'm usually hanging out, without fail. So let's just chill tonight, okay? Let's just chill. Gavin! 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 First of all, Gavin! Gavin! Did you know it was Gavin's birthday recently? Uh... lovely birthday. Oh, this is the life. <laughs> right, it's Wednesday. Just had a lovely shower. I do like to try and leave the house and touch some grass during the week, but it had started to pour down with rain as I was filming my update for The Secret Circle because my plan was today. And again, like this shows like how different your plans can go when you don't really have like a sort of set schedule, or at least like you try to, but then things just get in the way. So my original plan was wake up, have two coffees, go in the shower, get myself sorted, film a vlog update for the first Secret Circle book, which I did, and then go to the park or somewhere local 
to just have a bit of a walk around, have some fresh air and stuff like that. But then yes, it did start to pour down with rain. And the funny thing as well is I was filming my Secret Circle vlog update 52 minutes, that vlog update is by the way, that's how long it took me to talk about the first book. And during the entire time, firstly it was quite bright, so I had to change the brightness on my camera because I was using the natural lighting, and then it got really cloudy so I had to turn the brightness up, and then it started raining so it got a bit darker so I turned the brightness up again, and then there was like a moment of the sun breaking through the clouds, turned the brightness down, and then it got cloudy again so I turned the brightness up. I must have changed the brightness 10 times during that update. I have to keep like looking in the viewfinder now. And if you watch a content creator and they look to the side every now and then, a lot of the time it's to make sure that we're still recording, make sure that everything is still looking good, the brightness is fine, the audio is still recording too. Because I remember once I was filming a really long vlog update and I got halfway through it, I looked in the viewfinder and I saw that the volume wasn't moving at all. And that was because I forgot to turn the microphone on. So that's just like something in case you're like watching a video and we're just like kind of like looking off to the side every now and then. That's why. But yeah, that took a long time to do. So I'm not going to the park today. I'm gonna go to the park on Friday instead. I have a live show in the evening, but I can do that like well before then. And it can be like my wind down after this week because I do have live shows all weekend too for my channel members and Patreons. Every weekend I usually do something and it's like the best ever because I do love doing movie nights with patrons, my true crime and wine night with my patrons. I honestly feel like the gold is more razzle dazzle. Like I love that you are wearing a gold mask right now. How, ins how beautiful. If anybody else has their face masks at home, we just can't do a live show or like any kind of summer party without it. It's my birthday tomorrow. I'm kidding. <laughs> so I have one more set and then I'll be done. Okay, next time. Why do I look like fucking Simba? <laughs> <laughs> I really look like Simba right now. <laughs> Remember who you are. Wait, I need a picture, please. Oh my god, wait, where's my... <laughs> Should I make myself bigger? Yes! Oh my god, this is the best thing I've ever seen in my life. I mean, you look incredible, but like you really look like Simba. <laughs> I, feel I look like Simba. I look like Simba or Mufasa. Would take your pick. They are what I look forward to the most after a long week. So I usually do those on like a Sunday night. So I'm going to be planning that today. Now that my content schedule has shifted because I can post this video earlier and I can take a bit more time with the Secret Circle, I'm like, I have nothing to post until Monday, which is this video. I have nothing. It's only Wednesday now. And when I don't post a video in a certain amount of time, views drop and ad revenue drops. And I, I constantly have to upload something every few days in order for things to stay level or to increase. Let's talk about analytics for just a second. And I guess the importance, for my channel at least, uploading a bit more regularly. Because I know there are YouTube creators out there who can do one video a week or two videos a month and dip. And they'll be absolutely fine. But I always need at least two videos a week spaced out so that my levels will stay consistent. I might as well just show you. <laughs> Okay, so looking at my analytics, this is from like the last 28 days. Well, I didn't upload here. So as you can say, it goes down and then up when I did the live show, up again when I uploaded a video. And you can see here in April, like there was a big gap. Like let's, let's look at April. I didn't do that great in April with like content to begin with. And I had like this big gap, this big gap here where I didn't upload anything. And you can see it, have a bit of a toll on my views. And every time I upload, oop, it goes up, which obviously makes sense. It does make sense. But yeah, a lot of the times it does affect my revenue. And as I said with February, so let's have a look at February. 1st to the 28th of February. So looking at February, as you can say, I only uploaded four times and I did two live shows and it wasn't that great of a month for me. So it just goes down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. <laughs> so you can say like it just really affects your channel when you don't upload on given days. Like if you don't space the uploads out, it can like really affect. And obviously that doesn't apply to everyone. And some people can ride the wave of videos going viral or videos doing like really well. But for me personally, not all of my videos do that great. 
and I can't just ride that wave all the time. I will say like March, I think was a fantastic month. And that was mainly because I guess my Gossip Girl video, I was gonna say it did really well there. Yeah, it started off like after the end of February, really low. And then I uploaded a One Piece video, it does usually well, and then Gossip Girl. And then I kind of like helped it quite a bit and it helped it stay above a certain level. And then I did have this big gap here as well. Down, 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 up, down, up, down, up, down. So like, it's really hard to stay consistent. So that's exactly what I need to do with May. So this is May so far. This is like the first nine days of May. And yeah, it's just like, it is the first nine days, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, one to nine. Okay, perfect. Uh, and I, I do know that revenue as well as like so previous two days. So that's like from the first week of May. So as you can see here, I uploaded on the first and I didn't upload. Well, I have... This is the thing though, now in May, I'm not uploading again for another week. So I uploaded a video on the 1st and then uploaded a video on the 8th and that's about it. I had the live show on Saturday the 6th of May. I have nothing until Monday. So I wanna see this go down like I did with this one too. Cause I, I have to think about these things. Cause if I don't upload regularly, my revenue will come down and I need that revenue to live and pay my bills essentially. So I could work today on doing a Berserk video, which I couldn't really fit in this month because of the schedule, because I need to do the Secret Circle, which I can spend more time doing now that I can upload this video earlier. So I could read Berserk all day today. The thing is though, I would have to upload on Friday. So I'd read it all today, edit it all tomorrow, upload it on Friday. I could do that. However, I'm working on this video too at the same time. And I don't want this to be just me, because I would have to spend all day tomorrow editing because my videos do end up coming out like two and a half hours raw footage. I usually cut it down to around about an hour and a half an hour for like the manga videos that I do. Unless it's one piece, then they're two hours. Like it would take all day to edit. And I don't think that's interesting to watch. <laughs> and I wanted this to be a more interesting video. And I do still want to leave the house at some point this week too. But if I don't upload something again this week, then I can see the views and the revenue drop every single day and I'm not uploading again for another five days. So what do I do? Actually, if I do end up reading Berserk today, I have to film it all day too. And then I don't wanna do reading sprints because it's harder to actually film while I'm doing reading sprints. And then I won't really be able to do reading sprints tomorrow either because I'll be editing. You see what I mean? <laughs> okay, so I'm not gonna do it. I'm gonna do the Berserk video when I have more time. And I do genuinely want to read more Secret Circle, not gonna lie. Okay, let me think on it. Because I know I definitely have a live show. I say this is the thing. If I do a live show today, tomorrow, I also have a live show on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So that'll be five days of live shows in a row. But it's just the idea of being live five days in a row. It's like, do I want to be on camera that much? Like, I already have to film, and I already film so much that it's like, I don't really want to see and hear myself that much. <laughs> and on Saturday, I do want to try and edit this video. So I can get it up for early access on Patreon as well. Okay, let me have more of a think. I do still have a nice fresh cup of coffee. Coffee always makes things better and always puts things into perspective. So yeah, let's just uh, let's just see what we do. Hear how loud that is. <laughs> be quite nice to I think sit up here and read. I'm not going for a nap, but I will be. Lying on my bed, I will be reading. I've got these under the eye mask things on at the minute just to rejuvenate my eyes. But I decided against forcing myself to do another video this week. So I'm gonna be doing that. So I will be doing four days of live shows in a row, but that's fine. I have just eaten. And when I eat, for some reason, I feel like I want to like lie down and nap and you know, not do anything. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lie in bed with Ash apparently now. Ash and Toby, they're both on the bed. I'm gonna lie down, I'm gonna read the next part of The Secret Circle, finish that book. You know, having a bit more of a chill night, staying away from screens. YouTube does this thing, right, where you get a random notification every now and then for a comment. I do get a lot of comments a day, but YouTube pushes, like, a push notification every now and then with, like, any random comment. Half of them are just, like, random, normal, nice comments. But the one I got today as a push notification is from someone saying, why is your voice like that? And I've had so many comments over the years about my voice, about my videos. Like, you know, you do get troll comments a lot when you upload videos on YouTube. That does definitely sting. And what I do is I allow myself some time to be sad about it, 
I, you know, I sit and I stew and I'm just like, oh, woe is me. Definitely brings me back to my school days. I just forget about it and move on. I just forget about it and move on because they ain't worth shit. They ain't worth shit. So, oh crap. Oh no. You can tell I don't use these that often. Okay, I probably messed that right up. It's fine. I genuinely can't remember what I was talking about now. <laughs> oh yeah, because it was part of the Q&A that I'm doing tomorrow. A lot of questions that I got asked about being a content creator. Yeah, getting hate comments suck. I don't mind critical comments. I don't mind it if I get something constructive about my, my videos or anything like that. But when it's to do with appearance or my voice or just random things like that, I just ignore it. I just ignore it. Or sometimes I do talk back because sometimes it can't hold me back. But it's very rare that I do that. I usually just leave it and forget about it. I did reply to this person today. So I said, before I ask, are you homophobic? Because sometimes I do jump to conclusions as well. Maybe he's just on about the microphone. I doubt it. I doubt it. But I just thought I would ask that. And that was what, like two hours ago now and he hasn't replied. So honestly, these little keyboard warriors, scum of the earth, spineless cowards. That's all they are. So why should I give them the time of day? You know? So if you yourself are dealing with hate comments, troll comments, even if you're just like being bullied in real life, believe me, it gets better. And just don't let those words affect you because they are nothing. They are nothing. They mean nothing, whereas you are everything. You're awesome, they're not. You're hot, they're not. Hello, babies. Are you going to let us lie with you? Uh, are you going to let me lie with you? I'm going to lie next to you, okay? I'm just going to go lie next to you, okay? Oh, you're so beautiful. I know I'm sorry for disturbing you, but I want to lie down too. I want to lie down too. Hello. Hello. Oh, you're beautiful. <laughs> oh, you're beautiful. Oh, you're beautiful. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Oh, squatchy, squatchy, squatchy. Squatchy, squatchy. <laughs> How in the world am I going to get some reading done? Okay, as soon as I turn the camera off, Ash left. On social, literally, is now over there. It's like he doesn't want to lie with me or something. Are you embarrassed? Are you embarrassed? Rude. It's actually such a really nice day today, but it's still like quite cold, so I'm still wearing jumpers. <laughs> I've decided I'm gonna try a new cafe today. So there is a cafe near me. It's probably the nearest cafe to me, actually. And it's been there a little while, most likely like the past year. And it used to be an old church. So I think the church stopped getting used and they renovated it into a cafe and they've now called it Cafe Under the Spire. So I have seen it. I've never been in, I've never tried it. Not gonna lie, I think I'm gonna be struck by lightning if I try to enter. I will try today. I will see what it's like. I only wanna spend a couple hours there so I can hopefully finish the second Secret Circle book. And then I do have my Patreon reading sprint at 6 p.m. tonight. So I'll have plenty of time to come home, film the vlog update for Secret Circle, and just get things ready, prepared, make some food. I'm gonna miss Hash and Tobu. I've stopped going to cafes a lot. Yeah, I hate leaving them for too long. So I very rarely go out to cafes and stuff anymore. So I'm just gonna be gone two hours, okay babies? I'll not be long, I'll be right back, okay? Let's go. You know what? That cafe was absolutely wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. And it's much bigger than I anticipated too. And I stayed pretty much near the front because when I go to new cafes, I do get like a little bit scared. I don't know why. I'm usually really unsure about like the systems in place, what I should be doing, where I should be sitting. But it did look like there was like some kind of upstairs, which is so interesting because it looks like a genuine church. I'm just interested to go upstairs. It looks so cool. And then there was even more behind me as well. My mind was blown. I was like, 
why have I not been here earlier? Unfortunately, I wasn't stricken down by lightning, so there's that. And it was also really weird to read a book about witches in like an old church, essentially. So yeah, that was a really strange experience, but it's really good. I ended up having poached eggs with avocado and mushrooms. That was wonderful, absolutely wonderful. Had two cappuccinos. I was only there for like two and a half hours. I managed to read 128 pages in that time and finished the second Secret Circle book. So in one hour, I have my Patreon reading sprints. So I'm gonna send out a reminder. I need to set up my live shows for this weekend. So I will set up my members only live show on Saturday and True Crime and White Night for Sunday. I'll say what my patrons want to watch as well, because if we're picking another documentary, True Crime documentary, I usually like to know what people have seen already and what they want to see, so that we can watch something that's quite new to us. We watched the Boston Marathon bombing one a few weeks back, the new one on Netflix. Oh my God, it's such an incredible documentary. And it was really upsetting and sad, but so well made. So that was like a really interesting and like a fantastic true crime and wine night choice. So yeah, we need to have that. I also need to send out a reminder for the booze night tomorrow with Pris too. So much to think about. I think I have some emails I need to reply to. I also like to edit things as I go too. So I've been editing this vlog just every now and then. I'm just like, oh, I fancy editing something right now. So I'll just like go in and edit. So hopefully I finish another book. I have just filmed my review of book two of The Secret Circle as well, just before filming this. So that's done. And yeah, everything seems to be going pretty smoothly today. <laughs> I need to get my hair cut too. I might wait until tomorrow. I'll do the Q&A thing tomorrow as well because I will be drinking tomorrow. I might make myself some Aperol spritz for the booze evening with Pris. And I might film my Q&A before that. Even though I do like to try and schedule things, I am a bit all over the place in doing that too. So nothing's really set in stone. Just going with the flow. We're going live in one minute and 37 seconds. And I have myself a strawberry daiquiri can, like a cocktail can thing, which my good friend Katie got me for my birthday. I love her. And I love the fact that I have these strawberry daiquiri things. I've had quite a few now. Not today, not today, but since getting them for my birthday. And they are actually really nice. Really, really nice. So they are Funkin' Nitro Cocktails Strawberry Daiquiri. It's only 5% alcohol, so it's all good. And you're about to say what exactly happens during a Patreon reading sprint because there are some secrets. There are some secrets that should be spilled. 30 seconds, I have my book. I'm ready, I'm ready. Hey everyone, we're live. I've missed you all so much. I miss you all so much. How is everyone doing? How is everyone doing? How's everyone's Thursday night going? I need to ask for a show of hands. Show of hands for anybody who doesn't know what happened during the last reading sprints. Put your hand up. Put your hand up right now if you do not know what happened. Right, okay, it seems like there's quite a few people who are in the dark about what's happened. Thank you so much for joining. Welcome in, Lisa, I hope you're doing well. And also first time patron as well, thank you so much for joining. Hopefully we have a really good productive session. I feel like I've had such a productive week and I've had such a productive day so far too and it isn't even over yet. So this is the last day of this vlog. I always work the weekends too. I always have something going on on a Saturday and a Sunday. So even though I'm ending the vlog here, I will be doing more stuff over the weekend. But it's mainly things that you will have already seen. More planning, more filming, more editing, more Patreon live shows, channel member live shows, things like that. It is Friday night. I'm doing a boozy evening with Pris for Patreon in less, well, just over an hour actually. And I've made myself an Aperol Spritz for the occasion. And I do like myself a good Aperol Spritz every now and then. What I've done today, productive wise, I got my hair cut. <laughs> As you can see, I got my hair cut, needed done. I managed to write some more words for Wattpad, so I only have around about like 18,000 words left now to write before the end of the month. I put up a post to remind people about the Trova Trip adventure to Japan that I'm hosting in September with my subscribers. So that's all done. I managed to finish the third book in The Secret Circle and filmed a almost hour long wrap up of that one book. So I managed to finish three books this week on top of filming for that vlog and filming this vlog and all the other things that you've seen me do. So I can read quite fast if I need to and still talk about a book for an hour. Oh, honestly, that is just too good. I don't wanna put it down, but I'm gonna have to. So let's get into the questions that were asked on that community page. Have you found a work-life balance since going full-time? And I can also tie this into like how I separate work from my life. If you want an honest answer, I don't think I have found a good balance yet. And I think I mentioned this at the start of the video. I don't really switch off. 
I don't think I ever switch off. If I'm not making content physically, I'm thinking about it. You know, I'm up until 4 a.m. thinking about ideas for next year or, you know, like in the future, maybe a video or a random video idea for the next week. Because I do love what I do and I am very passionate about making videos, I just can't ever switch off. And I feel like that is a good indication that this is the kind of job that I was born for. The Oh crap, I need to be careful of the standing desk. I love entertaining people, I love making people laugh and being able to do what I do. It's honestly such a blessing and I, I live for it really. So I know people say like you should never really like live for your job, but when you love your job so much, like you want to live for your job, you know? And I don't think there's anything bad with that. I mean, maybe there are some jobs where, yeah, maybe you don't want to, you know, spend your entire life doing that. But honestly, I never judge anybody in their profession, no matter what kind of profession it is, if that's genuinely what they want to do. I love seeing people do what they love to do, no matter what that is. Even if it's something that I don't understand myself, as long as they're happy and they're not hurting people, then I'm happy for them, you know? So one thing I would love to work on more this year is finding that balance rather than like working seven days a week, 24 hours a day, you know? I would like to try and give myself more of a life. For example, the new Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom game came out today and I was looking at my schedule and I was thinking, I don't think I can play this game until July, at least. <laughs> I don't think I can. So I'm like really sad about that. I guess I would like to try and do things where I can have more of a life without feeling guilty for it because my main issue is that if I do take some time for myself, I'll feel guilty for it because I'll think, oh, I could have done something during this time that was productive. However, productivity is, well, you can get it in anything really. Having a rest, having a break is productive because you're helping your mind, you're helping your mental health. It refreshes your batteries, you know, it rejuvenates you that when you do go back to work, you feel ready for it, you know? I totally do need to find that balance and I wouldn't say that you should ever have to work 24 seven, but if it's something you really love and are passionate about, then there's nothing wrong with that. But if anyone has any tips for that balance, please let me know. I think my problem is that I make really long videos and I, can't stop doing that. I need to work on that. And then maybe I would have more time. <laughs> How do you handle burnout? Fortunately, I don't think I've ever really experienced burnout in the sense that I haven't wanted to make a video or anything like that. There have been other factors for me not wanting to do a video, but I don't think burnout has ever really been a problem for me. If I experience burnout with reading, then I will do whatever I possibly can to get me back into it without forcing myself. So there are things that I do, like say if I'm feeling burnt out from reading, you know, full length novels, I will try a short book, a novella, a manga, a graphic novel. I will distract myself by maybe watching YouTube. I'm constantly doing something. So if I'm not reading, then I can do something else and that will then help me get back into reading. You know what they say, absence makes the heart grow fonder. So maybe just distancing yourself from reading or making videos can sometimes make you want to do it more. So don't force it, absolutely don't force it, but I feel very lucky that I don't think I've experienced a creative burnout just yet, not that I can remember. And if I have, it obviously wasn't something that really affected me in the long run. So even if you're experiencing it now, just know that it is just for now. You will not be burned out forever. You will get your mojo back and you will probably end up forgetting about this moment in time one year from now. I probably did have a massive burnout a year ago and I just can't remember it. We just persevere. How is your sleeping pattern under becoming full time? Let me tell you, I've had insomnia. I think for the last 13 years. I think I was in college and I couldn't sleep. I could never sleep really. And I think ever since then, I just haven't really slept very well. <laughs> but I, you know what, I sleep when I wanna sleep. I feel like this whole nine to five business isn't for everyone. Going to sleep when everyone else goes to sleep isn't for everyone. You know, if you wanna go to sleep at 2 a.m. and wake up at 10 or whatever, which is pretty much what I do, that's your prerogative. If that's what's best for your body and your mind, then do that. I obviously get enough of it to still have energy through the day and to get me through the day. I mean, if I didn't, then it would be a problem. And I think fortunately for me, even though I haven't had a good relationship with sleep for a good 13 years now, I feel like I get enough and you have to really listen to your body. There have been times when I haven't gotten to sleep until like 5 a.m., 6 a.m. Seriously, like the sun's already coming up, the birds are singing. I just adjust my day to accommodate that. And I know not everyone can do that. If you're working a nine to five job or you're working retail like I did and your shifts are all over the place, 
you can't really do that. And maybe actually work in retail for 12 years is what's messed up my sleeping pattern too. How do you find the courage and motivation to start a channel? It took me a long time to actually show my face on my channel. My channel used to be a Disney fan account essentially. I would make videos, I would cut up videos and put a copyrighted song over it. And that's what I did from around about 2006 through to 2018. Like I think the year before, I changed into a booktube channel. I was making just like fan videos on YouTube. Uh, well, I made my channel in 2006. I think my first video was in 2007, but it was always just like those fan videos and I didn't actually put my face on until really I started booktube essentially. But honestly, it was just like the inspirations from other booktube channels. I had a lot of booktube inspirations that really made me want to make a channel. And I know I said at the start of this video that I still have a lot of self-conscious doubt about myself and especially to do with my appearance and I guess the way my voice sounds, those things are still present. I ripped the band-aid off, I just went for it and I just started making videos for booktube with me in the videos. That was probably years upon years of deciding to do that. I started watching booktube I think in 2014. So that was five years of watching booktube and kind of wanting to join but not that really ended up making me go okay it's now or never. So in April 2019 I just changed over to a booktube channel and I haven't looked back since. So really, it was five years of hyping myself up for it and you have to wait until a time when you're ready. I always think, oh, imagine if I had to start my channel earlier. Like, would I have done better? Would I have done worse? But then I think if I had to start earlier, I wouldn't have been ready. And I'm glad I started when I did because that was when I knew deep down, this is my time. You know, in the words of Raven Simone, this is my time to shine. I think it's Raven Simone. I think she said something about that on TikTok. But just know when it's your time, don't force yourself to make yourself go on camera and go on YouTube. But my number one tip is just make sure that it's your time. Make sure it's your time. You're not doing it because you feel pressured into doing it. Doing it because you think, oh, this is like a natural time for me to join. I have something to say. I want to make a video of me talking about this, that, or the other. Do it when you know that you're ready. And as I say, listen to your body, listen to your mind, and you will find the right time to join. The courage will come, and my motivation to make YouTube and stuff what did come from other creators. So watch other creators, watch people, how they do it, let them inspire you, because God knows I have a lot of inspirations on YouTube and BookTube in general too. A lot of people I look up to, a lot of people I inspire to be, and I use that and it helps me to make videos. How can I grow as a content creator? I feel this is like a really hard question because it's so dependent on so many different factors and every single YouTube channel will probably tell you something different and each YouTube channel as well has a different story of how they grew as a content creator. So my tips really are just make sure that you have a library of videos on your channel. Make sure that when somebody finds one of your videos, whether it's through the algorithm, through searching, that you have a wealth of videos to show them. And I guess one thing that can really help with this too is that when you have, you know, such and such videos on your channel, kind of organize it. So if you go on my YouTube channel page, I do have playlists and I have them displayed in a way that it's almost like you're on Netflix, right? And you're scrolling through and it says like, oh, you get to a binge-worthy series or like romance films, you know, things that you would really find interesting if you're just scrolling. So like, feel free to just like steal off my homepage. I am not the first person to put playlists on my homepage and I'm not the last. Organize your channel. I feel like that's like one of the most important things. Organize it. So on your YouTube channel homepage, maybe have sections because if somebody finds one of your romance videos, for instance, and they want to watch more of your romance videos, don't make it hard for them. Have a place on your main page where people can find all of the videos that they're looking for because you don't want a potential subscriber to click on your YouTube channel and then be put off from subscribing because they can't figure out where your videos are. If you do upload a lot of videos and vlogs, it might be hard for them to be able to scroll through all of that to find the ones that they want and they might give up after a few seconds. So just make sure everything is in the place where it needs to be and that should help. I feel like a lot of growing on YouTube is luck based. It really is. I feel like as long as you keep making content and videos 
you know, try and make your thumbnails catchy, your titles catchy, then it will really help with your growth. Yeah, I guess it's just like the consistency, I guess. So just be patient, just keep working hard, make sure you're still making the videos that you love and want to make, and hopefully then, you know, YouTube will appreciate you and give you your due. But having an organized channel, I think, is my number one tip. What do you do on bad mental health days and you don't want to film? If you want the absolute honest answer, I force myself. <laughs> I honestly don't feel like I have an option to not do a video. I can't go a full week without uploading something because if I don't do that, then I will drop off and I won't be able to afford to do what I need to do. And I guess this is like the wider problem with YouTube and you could ask any content creator who does this as a job. You know, you just can't really take that time off because YouTube will punish you for it essentially. So for example, like in December, it was like a really bad month for me mental health wise. I had just asked my housemate to move out and they were in the process of moving out. I felt like a really shit person. I had a close friend treat me like shit and then gaslight me. And then just like loads of other things were piling on top of me, on top of me, on top of me in December that I was just like, I'm ready to just like leave. Like I even I remember I deleted my Instagram, my Twitter and I was like, oh, I'm leaving forever. But then I remembered I had obligations and I was like, I can't do this. I can't act like this. So, you know, I just had to grin and bear it essentially from pretty much the start of December to I guess I didn't really start getting my mojo back until around about mid-January. If I had to take that entire month off, ugh, I would have not made any money. I would have had to have looked for another job, which is like honestly the most scariest part of being a YouTube creator is that when you start to see a decrease in your ad revenue or in anything like that, it just, it, it scares the life out of you. It really does. It's kind of conditioned me that I'm not really allowed to take time off for bad mental health. I'm not allowed to take time off for sick days. I remember I got sick twice in January. Yeah, I fell ill twice in January, I remember now. And I still had to make videos. I had no option, I had no option. But I will say, if I do have a bad mental health day, I will let myself feel sad, but then I just get back up because what else am I gonna do? I know in the back of my mind, it's never the end of the world. I just allow myself to feel that. And then I'm like, okay, only way is up. Let's just continue on. Let's continue doing what you love. And I'm not gonna lie, but like making videos does help with my mental health. Knowing that I'm working on things that I'm super proud of and passionate about, that is when I'm at my best, I think. <laughs> just make sure that you're doing a job that isn't affecting your mental health. It's partly one of the reasons why I left my book selling job. I'm not speaking ill of my time at the bookstore because I loved working there and I loved my colleagues. But when it came to certain days, or when I realized that this wasn't what I wanted to do for the rest of my life, that was when it would affect my mental health. And I know this is not an option for everyone. It really isn't. I know a lot of people are stuck at jobs that they cannot get out of, and it does affect their mental health. I was in a place last year where I was like, I'm, it's gonna start affecting my mental health if I can't focus my passions and what I love to do into making videos. So I did the riskiest thing I could ever think of, and that was to quit my job and do this full time. Long story short, allow yourself to feel sad, but just know that it will get better. How do you come up with your video ideas? I watch a lot of things outside of BookTube. I watch like gaming channels. I watch Paranormal Investigators. I watch ASMR. I watch like everything, okay? I watch like everything I possibly can on YouTube. If you watch outside of your niche or your field, then you will be able to think outside the box a bit more, I think. The reason why I started making like longer videos was because I was watching a lot of gaming channels where their videos were so long. They were making like four hour documentaries on games and things. And I was like, oh, I wanna make long videos like that too. Why can't I? So I would start making longer videos. And in terms of like other video ideas, like honestly, they come from everywhere, absolutely everywhere. My spooky visit and haunted locations came from paranormal investigative YouTube channels. The Snapchat filter unhaul video I did came from TikTok. And just watching other things and thinking, how can I relate this to books? And that always helps me. I was saying that though, I do have a lot of inspirations from BookTube, but I do take a lot from BookTube as well, don't get me wrong. There are some creative people on BookTube who I absolutely love and admire. But honestly, thinking outside the box helps by watching outside of BookTube. How do you decide which videos to do versus which ones to scrap? I have canceled quite a lot of videos and I wish I did what Kayla does from Books and Lala, where like she keeps a lot of that footage and does like a canceled video series every now and then. 
and maybe reads books from cancelled videos every now and then too. I'll start filming and if I'm not feeling it, like I'll film an intro, every single video I have has an intro. If I'm not feeling it by maybe the first or second update, then that video is getting scrapped. Like I can really feel whether my heart's in it and I can see it reflected in the video itself. So I did do a reading the lowest rated book on my TBR in the lowest rated hotel in London video last year. I started filming that and then I just knew. I knew as soon as I got to, yeah, the second update, I was like, this video is diabolical. It's not working for me, so it's not gonna work me trying to edit this because I can tell from the light in my eyes that I'm not in this. So I think it's just a lot of, again, I like paid attention to your own body language and your own mental state, whether or not this is a video you enjoy making. How much planning goes into your read long videos? I guess it's been some of my big vlog projects of reading a full series in one video, like I've been working on this week. So you saw that in the introduction, I have like a sort of cheat sheet for the introduction with like information and stuff, but I approach every single one of those differently. For example, Gossip Girl, I have a 35 page manifesto of pretty much everything that happened in the series. I read all 14 Gossip Girl books, for example, and I just wrote down all the quotes that I thought were interesting, which was honestly a lot. The topic of that quote, maybe the themes of that quote, the page numbers, the book titles, everything. Everything I had written down so that when I filmed the video, I could talk about everything. And that was like the first time that I did something of that size and that video turned out to be four hours long. And in order to plan that, I had to carve out an entire month to read those books. So back in February, I read all of the Gossip Girl books throughout the month so that I could start filming it at the end of the month, edit it for four or five days, and then get the video out. But that is a bit of a special case. So I'll talk about an upcoming one that I'm currently planning that you can see more of, like how I plan it. So I'm doing Are You Afraid of the Dark? the book series in October time. And I've been planning this since around August last year. So I do have like a Google Docs. I like using Google Docs because I can also open it on my phone like I'm doing right now. And I usually have like dates. I set out dates so that I kind of know when to schedule things, when to plan things. So I'll have my reading dates, filming dates, editing dates, upload date. And for the Are You Afraid of the Dark series in particular, there are 23 books in that series. And I had to painstakingly try and find all of these books. And they are out of print, they are very hard to find, and I'm gonna be completely honest with you here in terms of like how much money I spend on a video. So I have managed, actually yesterday, I managed to track down the very last book I needed to complete the series so that this vlog can go ahead. But in total, I have spent £451.99 on the 23 books, and that's around about $565. So I've already spent that much money on that video. And I haven't even made it yet. But I needed to get these books because they're not available anywhere else. So I had to get them, track them down. That is like the first thing I need to do for one of these videos. I need to make sure I can get the books for them. And then I think of props, clothing ideas, things like that. So I want to start off the video wearing like a kind of related shirt to what I'm talking about. So like the Midnight Society, there are a couple of shirts I have my eye on. Don't know if I'll buy both of them, but I'm going to think of like what I need to wear for this video, any props I need to buy for this video. So then I also go into like introduction ideas, like what I want to do for the start of the video. Do I want to replicate what happens in the TV show that the books are based off of? So I do have an idea of starting the vlog at a campfire, making it feel like an introduction to a TV show episode. I do have a Google Talks. I try and write everything down. I think of props. I think of what I need to do to film. And then like, if you think of how much money I'm spending on this video, in terms of like props I need to get too, then I'm probably gonna spend about 600 pound to make this Are You Afraid of the Dark video, which I don't know how much that is in dollars right now off the top of my head. Am I gonna make that money back? No, most likely not. The ad revenue on that video will not make that. But that's where Patreon comes in, that's where my One Piece channel membership comes in. That really does help me to put the money back into my channel so that I can, you know, actually make them and make better and longer videos for everyone and make sure that that money is going towards something that is worthy of, you know, being spent on. So yeah, the videos I make are usually actually 100% funded by Patreon. I definitely would not be where I am today without them. So I love you guys so much. If you're watching, thank you so much. I honestly appreciate you all from the bottom and top and my center of my heart. I need to hurry this up because I've got like 28 minutes before this next live show. So long story short, I put a lot of planning into it and usually it's like around about a year of planning. How do you stay on track when doing longer projects? February was a big test for me because that's when I did the Gossip Girl vlog and it honestly shook me to my core, how long it took me to do that and how it affected my other videos. Usually I post maybe around about like eight or nine videos a month 
but in February I only posted four because of how long it took me to do that. So because of that video I've managed to be able to schedule my time a bit better when it comes to approaching future longer videos and that is by writing it down, writing down like how long I think it's going to take for me to finish reading these books, how long it's going to take me to film it and edit it because I seriously underestimated the time it would take for Gossip Girl so it threw everything out of whack but now as long as I have a document and I have the dates that I can project onto it now I will also add a couple more dates onto it so that I can have that freedom and then try and film smaller videos around that whether that's a book haul, an unhaul, a TBR, you know things that are booktube staples in order to help me get out the longer projects too. But also because I'm so passionate and the longer video projects are the ones that I'm most excited to make, it's not hard to keep me motivated and on track to do them. As I've said, I usually make my thumbnails first and seeing the thumbnails, it makes me inspired because then I'm like, oh, well, this is what it's gonna look like when it's done. And I can't wait for that to happen. So I just focus on that and that keeps me motivated and on track to do it because I'm like, I've got no other option. <laughs> what do you do to unwind and relax? I do love playing video games. I love playing God of War Ragnarok at the start of the year. I did have a little bit more time, especially while I was sick twice, to be able to unwind and relax, which is terrible really. Like I shouldn't wait until I'm feeling ill and physically it's impossible for me to film and edit. I shouldn't wait until then to relax and unwind. But if I want to, I really can just like sit down, play a video game. Well, I do carve out time in the morning, you know what, as I'm having my breakfast and having my coffee, I do like to watch YouTube. I do like to watch other people make these incredible passion projects and to catch up on my friends who are on YouTube and all of that. So like, I do use YouTube a lot to unwind. Like I'm probably, I, I'm too obsessed with YouTube. I probably need a month off it. I love playing with my cats too as well. That obviously helps me unwind and relax. Has reading become more of a job for you now? Do you still enjoy reading? I still enjoy reading, but I have found that I enjoy making videos more. So I definitely think in the past year and a half, I think maybe since 2021, I've realized that I enjoy making videos more. I like the process of making videos, the filming, the editing, more so than I do like actually like sitting down to read. Saying that I do still love reading. It is one of my favorite things to do in the world but I do think I prefer making videos. <laughs> but I haven't found it a chore yet because I'm making videos that I'm really passionate about and love making. And because of that, I'm reading books that I'm kind of passionate about. I mean, saying that though, obviously The Secret Circle, the books are terrible, don't get me wrong, but because I'm making something that I'm so passionate about because of those books, I'm enjoying my time and experience even more. Saying that though, I do struggle because there are so many books on my TBR I would love to get to, but I have that mentality now where I can't read it because I can't make a video out of it. There are so many books I was looking forward to reading over the past few years that were on my most anticipated lists and I never got to them. I couldn't fit it into content. I couldn't fit it into the videos that I wanted to make that week or that month or that year. So I do feel like I'm not exactly reading for pleasure anymore. I'm reading for content, but to me, I'm making content I love. I guess, yes, reading is more of a job for me now. But again, I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. Honestly, I, I don't know how to answer that now because I'm thinking about it and I'm confused myself. I'm like, hmm, hmm. Like I do wish that I could just read whenever I want to read. But at the same time, I'm loving making the videos that I'm making. I actually don't know. If anybody can help me out with that, let me know in the comments. Where do you find the time for mundane day-to-day -day tasks like cleaning, cooking, etc.? I love having an audiobook on or music as I'm doing that. So I will allow myself like some time during the day to do some cleaning and stuff because honestly, I do love cleaning. At the minute, it's a mess because I've been working on two videos this week. I haven't had time to tidy up. My cats play with everything. So it's like really hard. Like I've got dishes piled up in the kitchen right now. But you know what I'm looking forward to? Maybe tonight after this boozy live show, I will put some music on and I will do the dishes. Like, oh my God, like that sounds amazing. That sounds so good to me right now. It will get done. I took out quite a few questions about a grocery store haul, but I don't really get a lot of groceries because I get HelloFresh now. If I do get anything, it's like milk, cat food, cat litter. You know, it's like really mundane things like that. Maybe some bread if I wanna make a sandwich. You know, it's just, it's not that interesting, it really isn't. <laughs> Finally, what is your biggest dream for the future? Will YouTube be permanent? I hope at least for the next few years that I will still be able to make videos on YouTube and continue to do these passion projects of mine because I just have so many ideas and so many things I want to do video wise. I want to be able to travel and make videos while I'm traveling, like the haunted ones I've been doing and just continue to do that, at least for the foreseeable future. Obviously, I don't think it's set in stone. I've definitely done like a really risky thing by leaving a job 
in order to do this. And even though I am worried every now and then about the future, I'm worried like, oh, maybe this month I might not be able to afford to do these certain things, or I might not be able to afford to pay these bills this month. I'm still glad I've done it because I would have been so upset with myself if I hadn't. I'm gonna answer that question I had from the very start of the video, which was, is this worth it? I do think so. I do believe it was worth it. And I'm still so glad I did it. I'm so glad I quit my part-time job, that I'm now a full-time YouTuber slash booktuber, and I'm doing what I love. Because life is bloody short, man. Life is short. I've already spent so much of my life doing things I don't want to do. And I can't have that weight on my shoulders. I can't have any regret on my shoulders. I can't ever look back on my life and think, I really do wish I'd done that instead. There's like so much to say about that, but to wrap that bit up, this is my dream job at the minute. And I know dream jobs change all the time, and who knows, in five years, I might be doing something different. But right now, living in the moment, I'm happy. And I'm glad that this is what I'm doing. And I honestly feel so blessed that I've been allowed to do it. That I am allowed to do it. And that I have so many people support me in doing that. Because honestly, without you guys support me, I, I wouldn't be here. And that is just the... I, I can't even fathom how much that means to me. So honestly, to every single person watching this right now, every subscriber, every person who's liked a video, commented on a video, or joined my Patreon, my channel membership, any of that, oh my gosh, like, I owe you guys, like, everything in my life. And I'm gonna get emotional, fuck. <laughs> so I do hope somewhere in this video, I've helped someone who might wanna become a full-time YouTuber. I will say, like, even if you're just questioning it, just do it. If you can, if you are, honestly supported and you know that if maybe it doesn't work out you still have something to fall back on please do it please do what is best for your mental health first and foremost and do what you love please like that's just oh I just can't imagine if I hadn't have followed my dreams last year where I would be right now in all honesty it's a scary scary thought so we're not gonna go there we're gonna end this video on a high note because I now have 15 minutes before this live show and I'm so excited because I barely touched my Aperol Spritz. So thank you so much for watching my video. I really hope you enjoyed it. Please leave a like if you did and subscribe if you haven't already. Leave all your comments down below. Let me know what you thought of the video. Do you have any more questions? I would love to chat down below and talk about anything and everything. I wanna give a huge thank you to my patrons and my channel members for supporting not just my channel, but me too. I love you all so, so much. If you want to join my Patreon or my channel membership, then all the links are down in the description box. But yeah, I hope I will see you in the next video. Bye.